Hi, Peter Charles here, Folks for Life Fly Fishing. And yesterday I had a comment on one of my videos saying like, you know, you only need nail lots. They're great. They work. Real life. Blah, 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 blah. And I could have argued that point and that would have been, you know, useless exercise. Where does online arguments ever go? But they're useless. So I thought, well, let's put it to the test. So I uh, put together, you know, two pieces of the same fly line. I cut up this as an old fly line. And on one, I have a welded loop. And this welded loop is not a factory loop. It's one I've done. So disadvantage me for welded loops. This is a homemade one, not a factory one. On the other end of this, I've got a nail knot. Now, I've cut the end of it off. I've only put a rough left of roughly an inch of mono because I didn't want the mono dragging the end down. This nail knot is probably one of the best I've ever done. I spent a lot of time making sure it's absolutely perfect. It's, it's a work of art for a nail knot. And it is tight. Trust me, it is really tight. Okay, I yanked on it as much as I dared. So it's a perfect nail knot and it's super tight. So we're going to see what happens when we put this in water versus the welded loop in water. Come here, welded loop. There we go. We're going to put the welded loop in water and see which floats. And how we're going to do this is I put some weight on them to bring them underwater. Because really, when we're fishing, a lot of the time, the end of the fly line is underwater. If we're swinging wet flies, we're swinging streamers, it's under the water. If we're doing straight line nymphing with a weighted fly, the tip is under the water. Even with dry fly fishing, you know, currents and, you know, the riffles and what have you can drag the tip of the water, the tip of the fly line, I should say, under the water. So uh, you, your tip of your fly line spends a lot of time subsurface. So I put some weight on the, uh, these lines and I put them in a pan of water, put some weight on them, and then lifted the weight off to see what happened. To see if water wicked past the nail knot and started pulling the front end of that nail knot down. So uh, first off, we're going to put up a picture of what it looked like when I started. And then I'm going to put up a short video clip of the actual test. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, to just to be fair and to be honest, these fly lines have a natural curve, which, you know, if I really spent time straightening them out, maybe I could have got the curve out of them. Yeah, that's going to distort the result a little bit. But the, the, the thing is, you you know, subtract the curve, there's no doubt. The nail knot still lets water by and it still wicks. So let's go look at the actual results. Okay, this is the before picture where both the nail knot and the welded loop are floating just fine. I haven't put any weight on them, I've just dropped them in the water. Okay, here we have the weights pulling both ends down. Now I'm going to remove the weights. Now you see the loop bobbed right to the surface but the, well, uh, the uh, nail knot never moved. In fact, it didn't shift at all. The point where the line starts to sink remains the same. See, that loop is floating, but that nail knot is sunk right there. Oh, you can see here that the uh, line for the nail knot is actually being held up by the welded loop line. So I've separated them, and you can still see that the welded loop floats and the nail knot sinks. I'm going to do one more test here. What we're going to do is we're going to sink everything. We're going to, and we're going to let it sit in the water, and then we're going to remove the weights, and we're going to see what happens. Again, keep in mind there's a bit of curvature to these things that's going to push things up and down. But let's look at it overall. Where was the tip? Where was the bulk of the line? And you can see in these tests what really happened when the line spends any amount of time underwater, you know, how much if it actually gets wicked up the fly line. Okay, now we've got weights on the line to keep them sunk. They've been sunk for a few minutes. I'm taking the weights off. Let's see what happens. Okay, look at that. The entire line is sunk, except for that little bit right there. And if I push that under, it starts to go under as well. Right now, it, the entire line, all the way back to where it exits the water, is sunk. Okay, here we have the welded loop line. I'm going to remove the weights, and look at that, it all pops to the surface. 
Whoops, get that one out of the way. The whole thing is floating except for a tiny bit on the curve where the natural curvature of the fly line pushes it under the water. So let's, okay, let's put the weights back on and see what happens. Let's stick them back on. And let's take them off and see if it floats. And it all pops back to the surface again. It shows you that the welded loop will keep your line floating because it doesn't allow water to wick up the fly line. Even the tightest nail knot still lets water wick up the core of the fly line. So there you go. You might like nail knots. I'm sorry. If, it spends any, if the tip of the fly line spends any time under the water and you haven't sealed off the end of that fly line in some manner by either heating it or putting some knot sense on it, whatever, if you haven't sealed it up, water's going to wick up for it, up the fly line, up the core of the fly line. I don't care how tight the nail knot is, it goes up the fly line. And I've had this experience myself when, uh, you know, back in the day when nail knots were the only game in town, there was a lot of online chatter uh, back in the old Usenet days, this is the 90s, uh, before Facebook and all that crap. Um, we used to talk online, how do we solve the water wicking problem going up our fly lines and causing the first two or three feet of the fly line to sink? We had to be aware of it. The nail knot wasn't solving the job. Uh, braided loops weren't doing the work. Whatever we put on the end of it, sooner or later, water would go up the core of the fly line and down would go the tip. So we put a lot of thought into avoiding it. And trust me on this one, welded loops keep the end of your fly line up. Nail knots don't. Cheers.